In September 2020, the legendary Bardic Broadcast made some predictions about the new hero quest before the timer even reached zero. He was right about some things and wrong about several others. I'm going to examine this video, see what he got right, and see what he got wrong. The first one is kind of ironic here, you'll figure out why. There is a chance that it will be a new version of Hero Quest with a board and miniatures and everything, but who knows what will come of it. It could be some terrible card game for all we know. It was actually both, which is strange. I don't know what happened to that card game. It appeared in early 2021 and it's just vanished off Amazon. I'm very confused by it. Number one, the elf will be depicted as female and as an archer. An elven lady archer? Why, that's a double match. That's what I would call a high fidelity character, where all of the elements fit easily and resonate strongly. That's a big part of why we see this archetype so frequently. And even if we don't see it straight away in modern Hero Quest, I'll wager that it comes along sooner or later. He was right on about this one, but also wrong at the same time. In the base game, the elf is a female character, but she's not an archer. She's the classic magic and sword wielder just like from the first game. And for those of us who bought from the Pulse campaign, which is everyone at this point, we also get a bonus of a male elf as well. Second thing, the art will lean away from realism. Even at its most cartoonish, Hero Quest is anchored by this image. This is the touchstone for the entire game. When you imagine your Hero Quest adventures, this is the lens that you see them through, looking into a real world with these looming monsters, gleaming steel, an incredible contest of magic, the living dead, all depicted realistically. Now I'm going to make a little bit of a leap and I'm going to say that a new modern Hero Quest isn't going to have Les Edwards on the cover art, or anyone really, that will give it such a strong backbone of realism. Now, that said, let's have a look at the one image that we have to hand, this witch lord looking fellow. I don't think it's completely unrealistic. It's not a total cartoon with no attachment to physical laws or anything like that, but it's clearly softer, safer, and more stylized than the old witch lord, who was also brightly colored and clearly visible in the art of his expansion, but he's not at all ironic in his sense of menace. He has real spice of danger to him that I'm not sure our new friend is ultimately going to have. I really liked his explanation there of why realism in fantasy is important. You can watch the full video if you want to see that. And yeah, he was right on about this one. The cover art and expansion boxes as well are in homage to Les Edwards. However, the art is less realistic. I'm going to be doing a video in the future about whether it's too cartoony or if it's fine. Number three. No dwarfs. Oh, they'll have one, but I demand a regiment. What's this witch lord gonna do when the goldsmith's guild comes calling, eh? Nothing. Except be destroyed. Where's my dwarfs? This one, I believe, is a reference to advanced hero quest because there was also one dwarf hero in that one as well, which would make two. But what we do have is two dwarves as well, the male and female. So for that, both the old and new games are sort of balanced out with the amount of dwarves. Despite its high fantasy trappings, the character of Hero Quest is very much one of sword and sorcery. It's a product of the volcanic pressures on the landscape of its time, and I often credit it as being one of the few successful and prominent marriages of sword and sorcery and high fantasy tropes. Another example is Golden Axe. I anticipate that in these times, a modern hero quest will not attempt to thrust sword and sorcery back into the hands of young fantasy fans, although maybe it should. I'm expecting whatever sword and sorcery elements there are to be little more than vestigial remnants of that mighty genre. I think a tone more akin to, say, the Forgotten Realms is more likely, along with an adventure of cosmic import. Yet again, he was correct. As you can see by these images, the game has moved away from that classic gritty sword and sorcery, and more like a Warcraft high fantasy style. It's not necessarily bad, but some people do have a preference for the old Conan style sword and sorcery type of thing. I just hope they don't exile the blank map so that we can get back to vicious, personal battles and dying alone in a forgotten crypt somewhere like we did when I was a boy. And in the Q&A video that Hasbro did, they confirmed that the blank map would in fact be staying in the game. Will the Hero Quest game system still have the blank map so you can make your own scenarios? Yeah. The power to make your own quests is an important part of Hero Quest. It's kind of core to our identity. 
Also, I don't expect it to resemble Warhammer except in the most superficial of ways. Chaos Warriors and Femirs, as we know them, are out. Replaced, no doubt, by something else. Probably something carefully named and trademarked. And yeah, he was right again. With it being a Hasbro-produced thing instead of a collaboration with Games Workshop, they did have to move away from the GW properties, with the Femirs being replaced by the Abominations and the Chaos Warriors being renamed Dread Warriors. And this last point is actually where he's wrong. Prenamed heroes. There's nothing like playing a character all the way up to their ultimate fate and knowing that the adventure was yours. And it doesn't take much to achieve this. All that's really needed is the ability to name them. From this point, you can develop a real sense of investment, of agency and ownership of the adventures that you undertake. So when you tell tales of how Goldbiter the Dwarf met his end, choked to death by a vengeful mummy in some obscure tomb, well that's your story about your dwarf. HeroQuest came with blank character sheets on which you would record the results of your character's exploits with a pencil. You would name them and there was even space for a coat of arms. I am anticipating none of this. I expect the characters to be named and canonized and for their stories to be controlled not by you or any player, but by the powers that control the game. As far as I'm aware, HeroQuest will still have those blank character sheets. Sorry this is really blurry, but we can see in the app preview that it does have a little character sheet there. So it seems likely to me that you'll still be able to name your character whatever you want. You can have a barbarian named Conan or Grognak or Poopface if you wanted to if you're immature. Alright, look, whether or not any of these predictions or fears come to pass is almost irrelevant. What matters is if this mystery game is true to HeroQuest's legacy. And to do the lion's share of that, it does not have to be made for me, and I don't even have to like it. Hero Quest was a game of its time, and it was there for me and many others to strike a precise chord with my love for fantasy and gave space and structure to my conceptions of fantasy, which continues to prove itself worthwhile. If a new Hero Quest, as a thing of its time, can do that for some other young roustabout, then at least part of the great spirit of Hero Quest can certainly rest easy. That is an excellent way to end his video. By realizing that Hero Quest was a product of its time and that it will change in the future for the new generations. And there you have it. That's what Bardic Broadcast got correct and wrong on his predictions of Hero Quest before the time it even ran out. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do give me a like and a sub because that really helps me out. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.